Now, the first thing you do is you serve Megan the martini, and then you cross up mm -hmm. to this table right here. Do you understand? Got it. Yeah, and then you want me to just fade in the background, right? Right. Away from the camera. And then after Megan gets shot, I want you to stare in astonishment from the background. Can you do that? Well, let me see. Oh, no, no, that, that was more bewilderment. Hold on, I got it here. Here it comes. It's pretty good, huh? What do you think? Oh, it's wonderful. Are you sure you've never acted before? Well, actually, in the third grade, I did play a talking rock. Places, everybody. We're going to go from the top for uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier here. Oh, no, we're not. I am tired. It's late, and we're going home. Megan? No! This is the last take. And if anyone, I mean anyone, messes up, they're going to find themselves on the unemployment line first thing in the morning. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Your wish is my command, O oh mystic knight of the Oingo Boingo. I said that we are going to take our places, and we're going to take the scene from the top. <sighs> What's that old saying? Best way to catch a bird is to... Salt its tail. Okay, quiet on the set and action. Steve, where are you going? We have to work this out. There's nothing left to work out. Don't say that. I love you. I've always loved you. I even loved you when I was with Max. Oh, is that supposed to make me feel better that you were thinking about me when you were sleeping with my brother? I I told you I was confused. I didn't know what I was doing. Why can't you understand that? Because you betrayed me. Every time I look at you now, I, my stomach turns because all I can see is you in Max's arms. Throw me away. Don't throw our marriage away. Just because of one foolish moment. A moment? How can you call it a moment? Don't you realize that I have to live with this the rest of my life? Whenever I make love to you, Gabrielle, I'm going to be th wondering where your mind is. I'm going to be haunted by the fact that you are thinking about Max and not me. No, I swear I want you. What was between Max and I is over when he deserted me in Argentina. What happened a few weeks ago? That was a mistake. Mistakes don't happen, Gabrielle. People make them. You didn't have to fall into Max's arms. You didn't have to let him take you like some animal. You make it sound so disgusting. It is, isn't it? My wife in bed with my brother. I'm not the only one to blame. I don't care who is to blame, Gabrielle. It happened, and that's what matters. And I don't think I can go on knowing that every time I look at Max, I'm looking at a man that has known my wife in a way that no other man should. <laughs> Please don't understand. I can't bear the thought of going on knowing that I've destroyed our love. You don't love me, Gabrielle, and believe me, I was the one that made the mistake to ever believe that you did. I'm begging you, Steve. Don't walk out on me. Oh, baby's awake. Yeah, you mean Max's baby. Tell me something, Gabrielle. The baby that you lost, was that really Max's? I told you it was yours. I know what you told me. Now I want the truth. Was that baby mine, or was it really Max's? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, he... what, what happened to him? He tried to escape. I had to knock him out. So I see. Did he get violent on you? Oh, this guy's a madman. He's shouting about, uh, you know, his, his wives, current and ex. <laughs> they sure do make a peculiar trio. Well, I'll bring him through and take him in. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, I don't want him bouncing off the walls in here anymore, so why don't you just uh, take him to solitary sedatum? Oh, you're the boss? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. On, on second thought, you know, he, he never gives us much trouble unless he's separated from Dee Dee and Delilah. So? So why don't we bring the ladies back here to him? Oh, don't know about that. Why not? We'll let the three of them set up housekeeping again here, and then there won't be any trouble yeah, to us. Yeah, but the out. ladies have been moved for a very good reason. So let's move them back for a better reason. All right, come on, come on. I really shouldn't leave him here unguarded. Uh, fine. Why don't you stay here with him? You just tell me where the women are. Well, I suppose there's no harm in that. No harm in what? Oh. Well, it seems there's been a spot. Well, the, the guy here, he jumped me, attacked me, so I had to knock him out. You haven't killed him, have you? No. No, he's just got a bump on his head, but hell, he's gonna survive. Oh, thank 
God. Alf, take Buchanan into the bedroom. Yeah. Here. Make sure you sedate him. Now, would you mind telling me just what the hell you think you were up to this time? Now the shower freshness of some... What? I'll tell you what I was doing here. I'm covering our butts. That's what I'm doing. I came down here to see how things were going. What do I find? I find a real Bo Buchanan just roaming around here, shouting at the top of his lugs how he wants to get back with Dee Dee and Delilah again. You know, he damn near got the best of me, but like I say, he didn't. Well, thank you for subduing him without hurting him too much. I'll admit it was foolish of me to, uh, to take the chance of letting him out, but you know, I was actually beginning to grow quite fond of him until he knocked me unconscious. Well, what right did he have to do that after I treated him so civilly? About as much right as you had to let him out in the first place. Garth, I had to have Bo there when I talked to that reporter. I needed to add some credibility to set the record straight on Robert and the horrible way he stood by and watched my father die. I understand your motive, Joanna, but from now on, we run a tight ship around here. No one but Alf is allowed in the bomb shelter without permission. That includes you. You understand? What is it? You, you're giving the orders now? You have a problem with that? Yeah. You're damn right I've got a problem with that. I go wherever I want, whenever I want. Well, feel free. Just stay out of the bomb shelter. You know, you must have a problem with your hearing, because I just said, I do whatever I please. Oh, I heard you all right. But the bomb shelter is off limits to you. Is that clear? Okay. Please, please, you have got to help me. Um, I, I, I know you're wondering what the problem is. And, well, you see, he said he wasn't jealous. But when I left, I could see the anger in his eyes. I know that, um, I know that you think I'm reading too much into this, but I'm not. I'm frightened. I don't know what he might do if he finds me. <coughs> don't worry. I've dealt with his type before. I can handle it. There he is. Oh, my God, he's got a gun! Put your life before mine. I care about you, kid. Sure, we haven't always been getting along, but when I saw how determined you were to make it, I I realized that I had to help you. Cut. That's terrific, kid. <laughs> I got Al to go back to sleep, but it's obvious that he knows something's wrong, so I think we should just calm Let's down. Let's not sidestep the issue, Gabrielle. I want to know if you were pregnant with my child. How can you think such a thing? Steve, I didn't tell you about my night with Max because it was a mistake, and I didn't want it to come between us. But I would never lie about something as important as carrying your child, which it would have been if I hadn't lost it. So you're saying that you were pregnant when you slept with Max? Yes. Hmm. And that was one more thing that made my life totally useless because I knew I was carrying your child and that you would never know. That child would grow up never experiencing the love from his father. It's a very touching sentiment. But before I waste any tears, why don't we just check some facts? What facts? What are you doing? A little biological arithmetic. Let's see now. The last time you made love with your husband was the night that I went to uh, Arizona to sell the ranch and got waylaid by George Vasquez, so to speak, which was the first week in May. Now, I came out of my coma on August 1st, which is the same day that you told me that I was going to be a proud papa. That is three months, Gabrielle. You were three months pregnant. So? So why weren't you showing a little by then? 
Many women don't show when they're three months pregnant. When I was pregnant with Al, I didn't show until at least middle of the... All right, fine, I'll buy that, but there's something else that's bothering me a little. Namely, how, in the course of one evening, could you miscarry and not even go to the hospital, get up, walk around, and not have any side effects at all? Why do you insist on doing this to me? Why do you always think the worst of me? Because when I do, I am usually right. Well, this time, you're wrong. And you must believe me. You must give me a chance to make this up to you. <laughs> must I? Steve, don't, please. Oh, please don't make it all married and how much we mean to one another. Gabrielle, whatever feelings I may have had for you are dead. Because all I can think about is the fact that you slept with my brother and you got pregnant by him. So if you feel alone now, you have nobody to blame but yourself. <laughs> I felt guilty enough when I thought it was what Steve wanted. But now... But now you haven't done anything. What are you talking about? I betrayed my brother. I slept with his wife. You slept with me. I've never been Steve's wife because I've always been in love with you. Yes, I forged that letter. I did. For us. I didn't want you to get hurt by it. I did it because I loved you, because we belong together. You honestly believe that, don't you? Yes. You're, you're everything to me. You're my entire life. We can't hide the fact that we belong to beca together because that's the truth. What else is true, Gabrielle? What else did you do? Was I right when I accused you of unplugging Steve's ventilator in Arizona? No! Was Detective Johnson right when he told Rafe he's convinced that you staged your own attack to throw everyone off the track? What else, Gabrielle, huh? What else is this sick little obsession gonna drive you to? How long before you just snap? How long before you want me so bad you will do anything to get me, even if it means killing Steve? Stop it! Please! How can you say these things after everything that we've meant to each other? You may have done something to me a long time ago. Now I damn the day I met you. Don't say that. Think of the love that we share. You listen to me. I never loved you. It was your own little fantasy. In fact, I would like nothing better than to be rid of you once and for all. In fact, <laughs> nothing would give me greater peace of mind than just to erase you from my memory. And get you out of my life. <laughs> Asa, I'm looking all over for Bo. Is he here? No, I haven't seen him for hours. Do you have any idea where he is? I haven't the slightest idea. Asa, how, how long you been here messing with this lasso? Oh, I don't know, a couple of hours, maybe. <sighs> you, you know, you, you stopped taking that medication, didn't you? The, the stuff that Dr. Bruner gave you? Weeks ago. I'm going to tell you something, Cord. I have been feeling mighty poorly lately. Ever since Bo got back from New Zealand, right? Well, I can't give you an exact date, because I don't know, but... Lately, my days have been drifting into each other. All right, look, uh, I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna make a call. I gotta find out where Bo is. Well, hold it, hold it. Why are you so all fired hot to see Bo? Let's just say it's real important that I find him fast. Yeah? Now, I'll tell you something. If I had a steer run through here, right now, I'd tell you something. I would be in business. Okay. Morning. Time for a healthy breakfast. This time, you're... 
drink. Me? Whatever gave you that idea? Because you're the only one around here with the mind of a ten-year-old. Oh, you just lighten up. Come on, you got a fast one pulled on you. It's no big deal. Oh, you think this is one big joke, don't you? Well, I don't. Every time I get out there, my career is on the line, and I'm not going to let you ruin it with your, with your stupid, idiotic pranks. Wait just a minute. I thought you were like the Tallulah Bankhead of daytime drama. You, what's the matter? You're supposed to be able to work your way around a little mouthful of salt. You deliberately set out to make me look like a fool. Oh, believe me, you didn't need any help with that. Oh, by the way, did you see my look of, of amazement? It's pretty good, huh? What do you think? You think I can get uh, nominated for an Emmy for uh, Best Take by Waiters? Hey, kid, I wanted to tell you excellent job on that scene. You covered beautifully. <laughs> Thanks. You know, when uh, she took that mouthful of salt, I thought I was going to lose it. The look on her face was worth the price of admission. Oh, well, I thought for sure that the director would stop, but when he didn't, I figured I'd better keep going. And you saved the scene. It was, it was fabulous. Uh, perfectionism. Oh, well, thank you. But if you'll excuse me, I have to go upstairs and change. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I need you to stop off at the wardrobe room for a minute to the suite down the hall from the one that you're using as a dressing room. Room 215? Yeah, something like that. I need you to try on the outfit that you're going to be wearing tomorrow. Oh, well, can it wait? I'm really beat. Um, uh, Mary Lynn, it's only going to take a minute. I have to see the outfit on you. If it's not going to fit, then I either have to alter it or buy you a new one. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll stop off there first. Thanks. Okay, uh, put on the costume. I'll be up there in a minute, okay? You know what your problem is? You're mm. a small-town Philistine mm. with absolutely no appreciation or respect for what I'm doing with my art. You know what your problem is? You are a selfish little girl who is enthralled with her own selfish little world and does not care whose toes she steps on to get her way. Are you calling me petty and superficial? No. I'm saying you got exactly what you deserved. You came waltzing in here the first time like the Queen of Sheba, treating us all like your foot servants. You criticize everybody and everything. And I just figured it was time somebody took you down a peg. It would take a far better man than you to even mm. attempt to bring me mm. down a peg. Maybe. But I doubt it. Fine, fine. You stay here and babysit Bob Buchanan. Be my guest. I'm gonna go check on Dee Dee and Delilah. Be my guest. I would, but, you, you know, nobody's bothered to tell me where they were moved to. So unless I'm being kicked off the team altogether, why don't you tell me where they are? I'm sorry, I can't. But in the spirit of compromise, I don't mind if you come down here once in a while to keep an eye on Mr. Buchanan. But I'm afraid it's off limits to you, Joanna. Believe me, I have no desire to set foot in this horrible place ever again. Good. No, just wait a second. I want to know why their whereabouts have become such a deep, dark secret, huh? especially for me. Because it's been decided that the fewer people who know their whereabouts, the better. Why? Security. After all, Lord Henry damned near botched the entire operation by taking Delilah to the park. I find that an extremely bad taste, Garth. My father was touched by Delilah's love for her daughter. What he did, he did out of the kindness of his heart. I'm sorry, Joanna. I didn't mean to imply that he had ulterior motives. I merely wish to illustrate that the fewer people who know where these ladies are being kept, the better. And that includes you. Why don't we just drop this whole thing? No, I'm not going to drop a thing. I want one good reason why I can't be trusted with that information. Because you are beginning to show the strain of things that have been going wrong recently. Your sister, for example. You made a real mess of handling her. Fortunately, she's safely out of the way. Well, it's good, good. That's, that's one thing off our mind. Now, why don't you return to Ace's house and keep an eye on him? Make sure he stays drugged. And stop concerning yourself with the whereabouts of Dee Dee and Delilah. Okay, fine. But I'll tell you, I'm going to sleep a whole lot better when I know where those two are. And if they get loose because they're not in a secure place... I told you not to concern yourself. If anything goes wrong, we simply move them to unmarked graves. Well, did you uh, try on the costume? Yes, I did, but I couldn't find the wardrobe mistress. Really? She must have forgotten she had to fit you today. She must have gone for the evening. See, I have to do everything around here myself. Is there a problem with it? Uh, well, I tried on the one that had my name marked on it, and I think there's been some mistake. What? Well, okay, I mean, the only way I can tell is if you take the robe off and let me see it. Well, couldn't I wait until tomorrow and then check it out with the wardrobe mistress? 
Why are you so uncomfortable, Mary Lynn? Oh, well, it's it's just that this costume is a little, um, well, it's little. <laughs> I see. Uh, look, Mary Lynn, if you're going to be an actress, you're going to have to learn to deal with this kind of thing. I mean, 10 million people who you've never met are going to see you. Why do you feel uncomfortable about showing me the costume? <laughs> well, I guess you're right. Well? Um, yes, that's the right costume. And it's definitely on the right body. I don't hide my real feelings, do you? I express them, show them what I'm really made of. Even the way I wear my hair shows how I feel, either up or long and natural. But I always want it healthy looking, so I use Clairol Condition. Condition products are good for my hair. Protein-enriched shampoos and treatments, alcohol-free styling mousses, even hairsprays that won't dull or dry out my hair. Good, healthy-looking hair says a lot about someone. Conditioning. I never thought of you as a little girl. I uh, always knew there was a woman deep inside of you fighting to get out. And seeing you like this, I realized that I was right all along. I'm not that kind of woman. I'm committed to a man I love. And even though... Even though I was drawn to you from the start. Look, Randy, I'm tired and it's late, and I think I'm really wasting your time. Listen, don't worry about my time, okay? Look, you were terrific today. Perfect. And I want to prove to everybody that it wasn't just beginner's luck. Right? Okay. Come on. You pick it up. Pick it up from here. Um, before we go on, could I could I change out of this costume? Why? Um, it's just that I, I no, feel... No, no, I think that you should keep it on. It gives me the, I mean, it gives you the motivation that you need for the scene, right? Okay, just start here. Okay. I can't go through with it, Brad. I love another man and it wouldn't be right. It's right if two people feel about each other the way we do. I don't know how I feel. I'm very confused right now. Well, maybe this will help you change your mind. How was I? Terrific. Now let's improvise. Um, I, I think I have to go now. No. You're not going anywhere until uh, you make good on your part of the deal. What deal? I gave you the money that you asked for so that your husband could start his restaurant, remember? That was just an advance on my first two months' salary. That was a favor. I did something for you. And now you're going to do something for me. I just figured you out. You're one of those arrogant, macho men that just can't stand to see women like me get ahead in the world. You'd probably love to chain me to a stove, wouldn't you? No, no, I would never be so cruel. Even inanimate objects have the right not to be subjected to your infantile behavior. Mm -hmm. Well, as much as I would love to stand here and play one-upmanship with you, I have a scene to redo, and I'll fix my own drink, thank you very much. Your days as a waiter and as an actor are over, Mr. Holden. Good night, Megan. Hey, where do you think you're going? Home. We've got a big day tomorrow. We still have more to shoot. Oh, no, we don't. That last take was fine. I've got everything I need. I had a mouthful of salt through that whole thing. Hey, that's okay. Mary Lynn covered beautifully. What about my close-ups? I must have looked like a complete fool thanks to that flea bag who owns this flea bag hotel. No, no, no. I, I used camera two and I'll cover all the important angles. And now all I have to do is go back and edit in some of your uh, stock reactions from earlier takes. Stock reactions? I'll have you know that every single one of my reactions is honest. Yes, Megan. Good night. No, I demand, I demand that you reshoot that scene. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, what's happened? This.
I know what it was. I'm, I'm not even sure it was today. Well, pa, can't you remember anything? Remember? Hell, son, you know my mind. I mean, it just keeps uh, playing tricks on me. Oh, damn it, Paul. What's happened to you? Hey, why, why, are you, why are you hugging me? Okay, listen. Listen to me. I know you've been drugged, all right? But I want you to concentrate. I want you to focus on what I'm about to tell you. Stop talking nonsense, Bo. It's late, uh, and I, besides, I like to go to bed. No, Pa, listen to me. Listen, your life depends, all our lives depend on this. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey, what the hell are you doing? Let go of him. No, no, right. no listen, hold it, right? What is, what, is this whole family gone plumb loco? Pa, look, I've got to talk to you. I tell you what, I've had enough commotion for the night. You want to talk to me, you talk in the morning. When you calm down, right now. I'm gonna go to bed. No, no, Pa, wait! Hey, you're not going anywhere. No, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. I am on to you, Uncle Bo. I know exactly who you are and what you have been up to ever since you waltzed back into this family. And you are sadly mistaken if you think I'm gonna let you get away with anything else. Think 